What is up my friends and welcome back to Hobble Create. In today's episode I am going to show you how to automate any mob spawner. So if you are new here then be sure to hit that subscribe button and remember to leave a like. And if you missed us building all of the machines in this factory then go ahead and check out the playlist because there's quite a few hidden gems in there. But for today's build, we're going to be starting in the overworld. We're going to be making a schematic that we can actually apply to any spawner anywhere in the world. It can be in the overworld, it can be in the nether, you've got a mod pack with spawners in the end, this is going to work there as well. And it's going to be super easy to set up because we are going to just let the schematic cannon do all of the hard work for us. Now this is going to be a fairly big build and you can decorate it however much you want but remember you are going to need to reproduce these resources every single time that you want to set one of these up. So the cheaper that you can make it the easier it's going to be to reproduce. So starting off we are going to take some temporary blocks. Diorite is our temporary block of choice because we want to remove it as quick as possible and we need to build 10 blocks into the air. Then on top of this pillar we are going to place down a placeholder block. This is going to represent where our spawner is going to be. And then on top of here, we're going to place down three building blocks. So coming to the base of our pillar now, we're going to build out five blocks. And we're going to repeat that for each side. And we're going to make ourselves a nice floor. Now we're going to make a start on the killing area. So I'm going to take some tinted glass because I want to be able to see the mobs inside the farm. And we're going to go one, two, three, and four. And this is where we're going to start the floor of our killing area. Now it doesn't need to be tinted glass. This can be any building block, but, but I, I want to see inside, okay? I want to see inside, but... From here, we're going to build out five blocks. And again, much like our floor, we're going to do the same again. We're going to build it out on all sides, fill in the gaps, and you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Now, because I want my farm to look pretty, I'm going to go ahead and replace this outer layer with some stone bricks. And now we need to turn our square into a cube. We're going to be bringing this one block above our cobblestone. Then next, we need to add in our roof. And you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Now, we're going to join the corners of our build, so our floor is now going to be connected to our cube. And we can go ahead and remove our temporary blocks. Now remember to leave the cobblestone or the building block you've put in there. That's going to help us a little bit later when it comes to locating the spawner and being able to position our schematic. And it also means that the mobs aren't going to be able to spawn on top of the spawner. Now comes the more expensive part. We need to come to one of the sides and we need to break out all of the bottom blocks that we've got in here and replace them with encased fans. On the back of the fans we're going to add in some encased train drives and then coming to the opposite side we're going to do exactly the same again. Then after designating one of the sides to be the back of the build we're going to come right to the center, remove one block and add in another cased fan. Then coming around to the front, directly opposite our encased fan over there, on our tinted glass we're going to place down a deployer. Then underneath the deployer, we're going to remove this block here and the glass in front. And in that gap, we're going to place down a trap door. What that'll do is allow us access to the front of the deployer, which is going to be quite important. Now it's time to work on a little bit of rotational power. So coming to one of the sides, we're going to work towards the back of our build. And we're going to add in three more encased chain drives. We're going to do the same on the other side. Then in the back of this fan, we're going to add in a shaft, a regular gearbox, and we're going to connect this gearbox either side to our encased chain drives. Now we're going to add in one more gearbox for a test. And just to show you how it works, we're going to first add in a creative motor. However, we are going to be supplying a little bit of power later. But just to show you how this works, we're going to break into here. You'll see that we've got our fans blowing to one side, fans blowing to the other. They meet in the middle. This one then is going to push everything towards our deployer. And that's going to have a nice big pointy sword in it. Bop, bop, bop mobs have been farmed. But for now we can remove the power. Next we need to give some power to our deployer so we're going to come to one of our sides, we're going to add in two more encased chain drives and all we need to do then is run a shaft. Now taking our wrench on the front of our deployer we need to give it a right click to turn it into attack mode and that's where you're going to give it a sword. But that's the core of the farm actually built. Now we need a way to actually collect the drops and then deposit them into some barrel for us to take home with us. So we're going to take a brass funnel and we're going to throw it onto the side of our deployer. And as you can see, that's just thrown our sword on the floor. That's because we haven't set up any filtering. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an attribute filter. We're going to throw in any sword and we're going to scroll down to is tagged forge tools. We're going to add it and then we're going to set this to the deny list. Now this is where things change ever so slightly. If you're in a mod pack that's got wither skeleton spawners, you're going to want to actually use a regular filter and just filter out the sword that you're using. 
That's because Wither Skeletons do drop a stone sword, and that's just going to break the whole thing. But for my use case, I am mostly not going to be farming Wither Skeletons using this farm, and if I did, I could easily just swap the filter out to block the tool that I'm using. Mostly, this is going to be used for Blaze. But anyway, with the filter now applied, we should be able to put the sword in, and he stays holding it. But of course, we don't want those drops just going onto the floor. Instead, we're going to use three shoots to collect the drops and bring them down to us. And then under that shoot, we're going to place in a belt that's going to bring the drops into our little AFK area. Now, I've temporarily re-added the power so we can actually orient this the correct way. We're going to remove the shaft going into our deployer. We're going to place down a vertical gearbox. That's going to give us way to pull the power down. And we're just going to connect it with some shafts and some gearboxes and hope that we're spinning in the correct direction. Then all that's left to do is throw in a barrel and a funnel. Now it's time for a demonstration. You found yourself a zombie spawner. It spawns some zombies. They're going to get pushed into our Poke product and all of those drops are going to get sent into our barrel. Now sometimes the AI does mess up and it does try and walk somewhere even though there's nowhere for the zombie to go. Most of the time though, they just give up and get pushed straight into our deployer. But anyway, while we're in here, we're actually going to remove our placeholder block because we don't actually need that anymore. That was just to give us an idea of what to build around. And then all that's left to do is build a windmill. So we're going to place down three shafts coming off of our gearbox. On the end of here, we're going to place down a speed controller and a large cogwheel. On the end of here, we're going to place down a gearbox with a windmill bearing on top. And then we just need to build ourselves some sails. Now I've gone for a nice 9x7, however the larger this is, the more stress units you have and the quicker that you can actually set your fans to blow. But let's give this a right click to enable it and then we're going to break a block to see which way we're blowing. We need to go into the negative, so we're going to scroll this down and we're going to see how fast we can actually make this. 64 RPM is the minimum that you're going to be able to do, however if you can go a little bit, a little bit more? A little bit okay so we're gonna be able to do 80 with a 9 by 7 it's not gonna be super super fast build yourself a bigger bit windmill if you want and you can afford the materials but as you can see we are now pushing all the way up to our deployer and that is going to be everything that we are going to need however we are going to want to actually make our area down here a little bit safer so i'm going to take some of our tinted glass i'm going to fill in the walls a little bit maybe make a way in and just try and tidy this up so it's going to look nice and we're going to have a nice safe place actually to, you know, AFK in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a door on three of the sides. Mostly because we have no idea what the terrain is going to be like and uh, we're still going to want to be able to access downstairs. This is kind of where we're going to AFK. So putting in three doors gives us three choices of what door we can actually go through. And I'm also going to throw in some lanterns so we don't actually make a mob farm down here as well. So make sure you leave a little bit of a gap here where the trapdoor is so you can still access your deployer and give it a new sword. Then for an optional step, we're going to come to the top of our deployer, throw in a chute and a barrel. This is just going to be where we can throw in some extra swords so we can AFK for longer. And my friends, a quick word of warning before you go ahead and make your schematic. Do a quick once over to make sure every block is placed where it needs to be. Make sure your area inside is actually a dark room. You also want to make sure that all of your funnels are facing the correct direction. Because my friends, now it's time to make our schematic. This is what we're going to be printing, so make sure everything is correct. So we're going to come to one corner of our farm, we're going to right click on the ground. Then we're going to come to the other side of the farm and make sure that we're including our windmill. Then we're going to hold down crouch and we're going to scroll this up so it brings it all the way up to the top. However, I am going to be leaving a one block gap between this wall and our actual build because that's going to make getting to our doors a little bit easier later on. But once you're happy with it, give it a right click and name your schematic and click the tick. Then in your schematic table, you are going to load it in. Now, I've got a lot of schematics in here. All of the ones that are labeled HC, those are from the Hobble Create series. However, all of these Hobble Creates down here, these are all of the schematics that I am going to be releasing to you guys. You've already got five of them. However, I have been in and fixed every single schematic from the series. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss when I give those schematics away. But let's go ahead and find our awesome one, which is going to be this. Click the tick. That'll load it into this schematic. And we are ready to take this to a spawner. And once you found your spawner, you're probably going to want to light it up if you're playing in, you know, survival mode. But I I'm a little bit cheaty boy, so I don't really need to do that. But we're going to take our schematic and we're going to go right on the top of our spawner. 
Now comes the time where we need to line it up. We're going to hold down Alt and we're going to move the Y position. So we're going to hold down Crouch and we're going to scroll it down because we know that we need to find our cobblestone pieces in the center. And we're going to scroll it all the way down until it looks like it's pretty much just above the spawner in here. I'm going to hold down Alt and scroll wheel up to move X, Y, Z. We're going to come to one side and we're going to bring this like so. And if you have lit your spawner up like a smart person, then you can just come inside, make sure everything's lined up correctly. You've got three pieces of cobblestone right above your spawner. Everything is in the right place. Then you're going to want to find yourself a nice little safe area and place down your schematic cannon. Then in survival, you'll surround this with barrels or chests to throw in all of the items that you need for your build. I'm just going to use a creative crate, but I'm not going to place it down just yet. Instead, first, I'm actually going to throw the schematic into the schematic cannon, click the printer settings. And the most important thing that we're going to change right now is this here. We're going to click replace solid with empty. What this is going to do is it's going to clear out the entire area inside our schematic and then start building. But now it should be safe to place down your crate. Click go. You can press the play button if you're playing in survival and it's going to start clearing and, you know, building your building, which is honestly really going to be awesome but as you can see it's removing all of the things in the way of actually building our little schematic and approximately 30 minutes later we are done so all we need to do now is throw some of our swords into our barrel over here that'll get fed down into our deployer and should stay there thanks to this filter then on the outside not ideal spot for it really might be worth adding in a little bit of a bridge to your schematic in case something like this happens if not, just get out your door and build yourself a little bridge because we need to come up here and give this a right click. But if everything is going to plan, we can hide down in our AFK spot. They should not be angry. Why are you angry? That's new. Why is it shooting at the... What? I have never seen them do that before. Did it see me? No, I'm in creative mode. It shouldn't have seen me. It's actually trying to shoot at the deployer. That's insanely strange. But anyway, everyone should get pushed. I don't think that's going to happen every time, right? They do get a little bit angry. But yeah, this one's not shooting. That was a very strange thing. <laughs> But as you can see, we have got plenty of blaze rods coming in, like 17 already, and it's only been two spawns. This is going to be epic. Now, I suppose technically blaze, we're the worst one to show it off with, mostly because they can fly above our fans. But as you can see, it's still not becoming too much of an issue. They are still getting put down. As long as they're not aggroed on anyone, they don't tend to fly up. So there we go, my friends. You now know how to make yourself a duplicatable mob spawner awesome farm. Still haven't really decided on the name for this thing, but you now know how to make this. If you did enjoy yourself and you learned something new, then be sure to hit that subscribe button as you are not going to want to miss whatever the heck happens next. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye, guys.